Welcome to the Pucast Podcast with your hosts, Watts, Brown and Pickering. G'day and welcome. I'm Brian Pickering. And I'm Kay Brown. And I'm Justin Watts. Welcome. Now this week, why we should be eating more onions. Mm. Plus a couple of yummy recipes. And what are the best healthy foods to buy each week? I don't know. You do all the buying. Well, Dr. <laughs> Michael Mosley has some ideas. Okay. Plus, eating oats for breakfast is very unhealthy. No. Really? Yeah, that's that, that's that junior reporter we just hired, misinformation. And foods some people literally cannot eat. That mm. one's coming up along with <laughs> all those topics. That's amazing, isn't it? Hey, right. Listen, in the meantime, uh, if you hear any background noise here, we're currently sitting here in uh, Eli Waters in Harvey Bay, and it's beautiful, lovely afternoon, 30s in the background, a few cars going, you know, but apart from that, it's very quiet and nice. Anyway, meantime, here's Kay Brown with the latest PooCast podcast news. There's outrage. We love a bit of outrage in the country's top northwest after community leaders in Jarajin, 200 kilometres north of Brune on the Dampier Peninsula, banned an Aussie tradition, the sausage sizzle. What? Oh, no. Sausage mm. sizzle. The CEO of the Jarajin, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure someone will correct me. Aboriginal Corporation Board says the ban isn't about making life tougher, but rather about insisting that visiting organisations bring healthier food options to help fight rising levels of obesity and diabetes, with all the health problems that type 2 creates if sufferers don't improve their eating and exercise habits. Now, CEO Nathan McIver said sausages are an unhealthy processed meat full of salt, and they want to encourage more chicken and salad or steak and salad and drinking water rather than soft drinks. What do you think? Ban the mystery bags? Mm. What's next? Pies? Mm. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, I, I'm thinking it's, it's, I, I get the, the idea behind it, but the logistics of it, I, I mean, I have been at a bunning sausage sizzle and yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So how do you actually change that to healthy foods? Well, it's an educational thing, isn't it, as well? What's good for you? What's not good for you? And maybe mm. providing some samples. I don't know. Yeah. Well, See, I think, uh, you know, the word's getting out at supermarkets and our suppliers that people are interested in more low carb foods and healthier options. So there's normal sausages and low fat ones, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe, mm. maybe there's room. Maybe they don't have to go the whole hog. However, in Victoria, the great Greater Dandenong Council is proposing to phase out deep fried foods with a switch to healthier air fryers, which use less oil. Local sporting clubs, including Doveton Football and Netball Club, reckon they couldn't make enough chips in those tiny air fryers for customers and they'd lose money. They've suggested the council can take their air fryer plan and. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe they should make bigger air fryers. <laughs> Maybe they should. Mind you, I'd like to know what kind of oil most hot chips are cooked in. Well, that's the big thing, isn't it? This is what people don't understand and we're learning about mm -hmm. as we go along. Yeah. We're talking about finding out where our fish comes from when yep. we go to a restaurant, you know, place of origin. Is it Australian? What about the oils that are being mm. used? Is it mm. really healthy, um, beautiful oil grown here in Australia mm. or is it the cast off stuff from when they make mm -hmm. the good stuff overseas yeah. and then they put the leftovers yeah. and flog it off to yeah. people making hot chips. Now, just when you thought the TikTok trend for enticing people to do crazy things was over, there's a new in thing. A nutritionist is saying it could be putting young women at risk of organ failure and even early dementia. It's called doing a girl dinner. And Gen Z females are leaping online to demonstrate how little they can eat at mealtimes. Some examples seen on the app include a plate of pickles, nothing else, yeah. a glass of diet soft drink, or even just a glass of ice cubes. Oh. Apparently it's not about saving money. They're trying to copy online influencers who claim girl dinners keep them thin. Mm. Oh, dear. In fact, trained nutritionists say anyone following this trend will find starvation triggers a hormone called ghrelin, which tells your body it's starving and to save as much fat as possible to survive. The upshot of that is any kilos you lose while, you know, just having yeah. ice cube dinners will go back on 
plus lots more. Mm. I actually prefer um, a little bit of rosé with my um, <laughs> ice cubes. But, uh, yeah, look, seriously, the, the, the problem mm. is that it causes mental health issues as well yeah. mm. as uh, dieting things. And look at me, look at me. And it's like, oh, I still haven't lost enough weight. I've got to eat less. Yeah. You know, all that. Yeah. They worked out after all the hoo-ha over the low-fat debacle uh, when we were all put on low-fat diets about 30 years ago mm. that our brains are made of fat and they need fat to function. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. No. I just wonder how they actually last that long without food. Mm. You know, go past lunchtime, two or three o'clock, and I'm I'm dying for some sort of food. It, it's not quite intermittent <laughs> fasting, is it? No. It's total no. fasting. Mm. And Starvation. Stupid. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Did I say stupid out loud? I did. Mm. Mm. Okay, as lastly, has anyone noticed a bit of a whiff in the air? You know, like personal body odour. Mm. If so, then we can suggest a possible reason, thanks to some data that fell off the back of a truck, conveniently into the hands of the Australian newspaper, revealing internal coal supermarket data showing people are cutting back on purchases. Not everything. It shows that in the 12 months to the end of May this year, Ordinary soap and body wash sales have dropped 33.3%. And that's not all. Apparently, the efforts to slow inflation by the Reserve Bank are slowly working, of course, so they say. But people are having to choose what they go without. And for a third of the population, it's soap, body wash, and even disinfectants. (laughs) Meaning rising costs are not just hitting our hip pockets, but our armpits too, as well as other body parts. Oh, oh no. <laughs> wow. Can, like, I mean, like, I understand people cutting back, but, yeah. like, you've got to keep this personal health. Bits, yeah. Keep yeah. Personal, nice. Especially girls. Oh, hang on. I'm thinking about the boys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and smelly feet, yeah. let alone smelly armpits yeah. and any other bits in between that are smelly. Yeah. 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 Be interesting to see. <laughs> like to hear other people's opinions don't forget to get back in touch with us if you've had personal experience of um, excessive BO around you absolutely you can comment on the uh, our Facebook page uh, the Pucast podcast or just go to our website pucast.com.au okay what have we got next KB well apparently we should be eating more onions you love onions don't you Joe? I, I do I've, I've always been a fan of onions and garlic um particularly pick, uh, pickled garlic i used to buy that from the uh, health food shops okay. and buy it by the clove and, and actually eat it by the clove really yeah and, and didn't have any bad breath problems or anything not that i noticed but I <laughs> okay so uh, why should we be eating more onions well there's some good research out and i did do a quick check because i noticed a uh, a website a little while ago called onionsaustralia.com.au and obviously you know it's all about onions and they say that a single medium-sized onion counts as two serves of veggies and of course we all know we're supposed to be getting our five serves of veggies a day Mm. and i also learned that in addition to being a deliciously simple way to boost your veggie intake They've got many impressive health benefits. They're great for immunity, for our mood, gut health, heart health, and the waistline. Well, that's what they say on the side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Taking their, their work. I've been eating onions and it hasn't fixed a thing, but anyway. <laughs> well, there apparently can be some downsides. And, of course, we've mentioned before about the problems that people that struggle to do low FODMAP, mm. you, you know, have to do low FODMAP because they don't absorb fructans very mm. well. And onions do have fructans that are water soluble but they're not soluble in oil so people who are trying to avoid onions per se can still get some of the benefits Mm. by using onions in oil put in the oil cook it up take the onions out and then you've got all the flavor and the nice Mm. stuff in Mm. the oil Mm. so it's pretty cool it's interesting (laughs) and um let me see the other thing that they say is it doesn't matter what color they are they're low calorie you know all the good stuff is there oh yeah and don't take too many layers off the outside. We've all seen people with a big knife going chop, 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 and oh, making yes. up all the layers yes. and then chopping them and throwing them on the barbecue. No, most of the good stuff, the antioxidant levels, is in the outer layers. So mm. if you can, keep it's, them off yeah. and they're edible. Yeah. Another time we'll talk about it, there, there is a way of stopping uh, or the kind of onion you get, I believe, to stop you crying when you cut them. Oh, 
Mm. I don't know mm. about that one. They do suggest that if you put it in the fridge before you start oh, chewing, that was it. It would be big. Actually, I've just seen some uh, news reports just recently where they've actually brought out a new type of onion where they ah. specifically adjusted yeah. so that they do not uh, have their crying. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good. That might have been what I read. Well, maybe yeah. you emailed me that and I'm just stealing the... The cons? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm pretty interested in that. I know a lot of people would, some who have to put goggles on or glasses to try and stop, you know, the, the sulfur fumes coming out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've recently been launched in Woolworths and Coles and those uh, other okay. bigger supermarkets. Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll have to check it out and do a taste test and see what they're like. Now, last little um, tip, apparently older onions have less sulfur in them. So if you're really super, super sensitive to that whole, wow, I'm going to cry, um, get an older onion or like a fine wine, which matures mm. and gets better with age, mm. get your onions and just keep them a little while. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. All right. Our next story here is about uh, healthy foods to buy each week and how we should be doing it. Now, KB, that news story you just read about coals and consumers not buying certain products due to the cost of living constantly rising, it's, it's a bit scary when you really think about it. You know what's mm-hmm. going to happen? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, to be honest. And the thing is that people are going to be increasingly reaching for cheap stuff yeah. or fast foods, mm-hmm. I suspect. Well, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Yeah, I have noticed uh, when I've been walking around the supermarkets mm-hmm. that um, their trolleys do seem to be a little less than what mm-hmm. I've noticed in, uh, previously. And I guess I can understand them going to buying less quantities of stuff yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to um, their healthier foods that they probably would have previously mm-hmm. bought. And what about you? You've been cutting back? I have, actually. Yeah, why? Why are you, you, you're, um, you know, ripping off the supermarkets? <laughs> oh, my, my excuse is I'm trying to lose a, a little bit of weight. Uh, however, it, it, yeah, uh, however, there are more economical yeah. versions of things that I probably I would have normally eaten. So you probably spend a bit more time looking yeah. for stuff. That's got the right price and the right, right ingredients. So, yeah. Right. Look, on a, on a recent BBC radio interview, we came across well known uh, way of eating guru, Dr. Michael Mosley, who also promotes the Mediterranean diet, which we'll talk about another time. He's explained the foods he always buys when he's grocery shopping. Now, of course, they're the healthy options and they're meant to be part of a healthy dieting plan for potential weight loss and staying healthy overall. But while we would love to have him on the Pukas podcast, you just have to put up with us for now. <laughs> <laughs> True. Of course, there is a lot of contradictory advice out there. Should I buy fat-free, low-calorie products or stick to full-fat options? What is the real deal? What should we do? And what's going to help us lose weight? Here's what the good Dr. M says he buys every week. Right, well, we might go through a couple of these together. First one is full-fat yogurt. And mm-hmm. um, you, you questioned earlier before we actually started doing this, you know, well, f- full-fat yogurt to lose weight. Mm-hmm. But he says he particularly likes Greek yogurt because it's got more protein and more taste. And he says mm-hmm. he eats quite a lot of yogurt. Do you eat yogurt? I, yeah, 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 absolutely. And the Greek yogurt. And I think the other reason he says that full-fat is better is that when manufacturers take out the fat, they often add in sugar. So oh, yeah. you do need to have a look. They add in sugar and salt. Mm. Oh. Now, the next one he says, what's that? Well, apparently Dr. Mosley used to hate fish. He now loves it because it's so full of good stuff, the omega-3 fatty acids and things like that. So, Josie, you know a bit about omega-3s, fatty acids and stuff like that. Tell us more. Yes, well, as I was growing up, as you know, I was, I was a uh, daughter of a home economics teacher who was a big fan of the omega-3 fatty acids. And one of her theories was that for young girls, as they're developing, they actually increase your boob size. Wow. <laughs> your memory. Oh, <laughs> So what happened to you? No, sorry. <laughs> no, what happened to me and my mother? I mean, seriously, we used to have sardines and uh, fish on Fridays. Obviously not the right kind of fish. It was the, the fatty fish that, that does the trick. And that, that, I, must, I must increase my bust. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like the, the salmons and the, and the fatty fishes. And, and, yeah. and as I was brought up on cod liver oil, and, and um, yes, you, as you can see the results here. And now uh, you want to have a look, people. <laughs> Excuse me, this uh, show is for uh, under 18s as well. <laughs> exactly. Scientifically speaking, I have done a little bit of research on that, and the omega 3 fatty acids do, in fact, help with or decrease the in- incidence of breast cancer. So if you start a child on from an early age growing up, 
girl, boy, whatever, on your fatty acids, mm. with your, 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 your fatty fishes and so forth, it will eventually mm. um, mm. decrease the chances of breast cancer. Okay. Well, that's good because boys can get breast cancer too and it's yes. often not talked about. So, mm. okay, all the more reason to have sardines on toast and mm. uh, smoked oysters. Oh, I mentioned oysters. Oh, no, don't mention oysters. <clears throat> I draw the line at oysters. Just, we'll explain about Jossie and uh, oysters later. Now, listen, olive oil is the other one. Uh, this is uh, mm. number three of the five that Dr. Mosley uh, recommends. And basically, it's a fundamental part of the Mediterranean diet. Mm-hmm. But there's olive oils and there's olive oil. Oil, thank oil. Mm. So tell us about that, KB. Extra virgin olive oil that's been cold pressed is Dr. Mosley's preferred option. And to be honest, mine. Uh, when we were in Sydney, I used to go to the farmers markets and things, and there was a, a local olive oil manufacturing people, and I would love the first cold pressed olive oil extra virgin of the season. It was cloudy, it was green, it was really yummy tasting. And I know when we were in Europe, that kind of olive oil is what everyone uses. Mm. Um, they don't use butter there. They use really good olive oil. Mm. You could smear mm. that on your piece of bread, tomato, garlic. And Bob's your uncle. So what's the difference between cold-pressed as to the other oils? I believe it's healthier. Um, when they do it at high speed and it heats the temperature of the oil being extracted from the olives, it, it changes the viscosity and the health benefits of mm. the oil. Mm. Oh. Interesting. But well, we're lucky we have really good olive oil now being we produced do. in Australia. We do. we do. Now, Jossie, number four on the list is nuts. You like nuts, don't you? Oh, I love nuts. Okay. It's going on the blue potato. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about nuts. What's so for me about nuts? Well, we're all a tad nutty, aren't we? <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I've always been a fan of nuts. And, um, yeah, uh, as in almonds, yep. all nuts, yep. um, they do have an element of the, the omega fatty acids as well. And um, yeah, they're high in, in protein. And I read where almonds particularly are good for perhaps just stopping you being, you know, a bit hungry. Just have a few almonds and just that's just before a meal before and it sort of you yeah. know, lines the stomach. Yeah, I like almonds. Yeah, when I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> and walnuts, they look mm. like little mini brains. And so apparently they're extra good for your brain health mm. and mm. staving off dementia. And I think we're all into staving mm. off, mm. you know, forgetting things. Now, what was I saying? Uh, hey, yeah. more walnuts for me. There we go. Now, listen, number five, the last one with Dr. Mosley's list is butter. But KB, you mentioned butter and oils before and, mm-hmm. and the whys and the wherefores. What do you reckon? Grass-fed cows mm. produce and, and other animals produce better butter. Um, so much better for us. God, it sounds like a, a little competition for mm-hmm. alliteration. But butter is um, quite a natural product. It hasn't been overly mm-hmm. processed, whereas, sorry to say, margarine makers, Dr. Mosley, his wife, who's an experienced nutritionist, says if it's plant-based, eat it. If it's made in a plant, forget it. Mm-hmm. And I like that mm-hmm. saying because butter is naturally produced from milk, Yep. which is great, mm. but um, margarine is a byproduct and has all kinds of things in it like mm. petroleum. Mm. I uh, read a little jingle some years ago, uh, only butter butters, it's better than the rest, but you know, I won't go into the jingle right now, but it was it was very good at the time, I thought. Anyway. You're lucky, Jossie, he yep. normally sings it. <laughs> <laughs> only butter butters, it's better than the rest. You better buy your butter, because butter butter's better. Anyway, uh, listen, I also asked chat GPT. Now, a lot of people are using, you know, these AI things or whatever, and I thought, okay, Dr. Mosley said that, but what does chat GPT say? And uh, here's a couple of things that uh, he, she, they, them said. Uh, leafy greens, we should be eating more of those, spinach, kale, this, that, and the other. Uh, berries, blueberries, strawberries, mm-hmm. raspberries, blackberries, they're packed with vitamins and antioxidants. Uh, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines, which you're mentioning then, trout and rich omega-3 fatty acids, nuts and seeds we also spoke mm-hmm. about, and legumes, beans, lentils, and chickpeas. So They'll be listening, listening to us. So why do we need Dr. Mosley when we've got AI? You know, oh, it's much more entertaining, <laughs> much more entertaining. <laughs> And se- um, seeds, we haven't really talked a lot about seeds. Yeah. Maybe we could um, make a little note to talk more about the value in tiny little yeah. seeds and how good they are for us. Um, All righty, look, moving on, we've got um, someone I'd like to introduce you to. I'm hoping this will work out. All right, are you ready? Okay. Stand by. 
Hi, my name is Misinformation. Did you know that eating oats for breakfast is about the unhealthiest thing you can do? It must be true. I saw it on the internet. Mm. Misinformation. Misinformation, yeah. Her name is Maisie. Yeah. And um, she's an AI. I don't know. I thought it was real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's been Googling about how good are oats or oatmeal for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And she reckons it's no good. That's, well, that's what well, it must be. She says she saw her on the internet, so it must be true. But what have we got there? We've got uh, Dr. Zach Turner. Uh, he's an Aussie doctor, if you haven't heard. And uh, he's um, he's kind of fighting back against these influencers who are saying, you know, oh, it's make you fat and all the rest of it. So what have we got? What information have we got there about that? Well, I had, a, I had a little look at Dr. Zach's page. I should say Dr. Turner's page. Um no, it's not correct. Certainly there are overly processed oats, which mm. you can get, which are flavoured, coloured, have extra sugar added, which possibly aren't the best for you. But yeah. he says oats in their natural form have been enjoyed for generations and generations of people. And I happen to know Jossie is a huge fan of oats. Big fan of oats. I have most mornings I'll have, particularly during the winter months, I will have oats. It only takes me two minutes in the microwave to um, to make a, a, a nice porridge, and and that's probably quicker than what you can with the processed ones. Mm, definitely, mm, yeah. and those are rolled oats. Yeah, yeah, yeah the rolled traditional oats. Okay. Yeah, mm. and a lot of people don't understand the difference because processing and all this stuff about avoiding processed foods, they don't actually mean to avoid everything mm. because oats need to be processed to get rid of the hull and they also get steamed and flattened mm. to make it easier to use them. Mm. But the cool thing is you can also use oats in savoury dishes and you can also turn them into biscuits. Mm. Okay. Yeah, chili bars I'd like and things to see like that. that. I'd like to see. Dr. Turner also says that the inclusion of oats in a diet can help regulate blood sugar levels and it makes them a, a beneficial food for in, individuals with uh, diabetes, mm, which is good. Okay. So, yeah. I actually cl- include um, a hand, or just a sprinkle of oats within my smoothies of a morning. So I have my, my if, if I'm not having just a porridge and a rolled oats, traditional rolled oats, I'll have uh, a smoothie, which is usually milk, a yogurt, and some chia seeds and some rolled oats and a little bit of um, almond butter and, yeah, and some fruit. Yum, that sounds delicious. Mm. And um, do you have to pre-grind the oats or do they just mix up nicely in the smoothie? They mix up nicely, yeah, yeah. no yeah. problems at all. And the protein in that helps keep you feeling full for long enough? Definitely, yeah. Okay. And I'm guessing, I don't know, chia seeds. Definitely, there's some protein in that, and um, it adds to to thicken the um, smoothie as well. It's a little bit of a thickener, so um, yeah, there's all sorts of benefits to chia seeds. Can we go um, around for breakfast one day and just check it out? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> or you stay the night. As soon as we get up. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool. Okay. Well, <clears throat> here we are with uh, Helen Farrell. Sorry, take two. Here we are with Helen Farrell, who's uh, actually a friend of ours. And I'm sorry I got your name wrong there, Helen. <laughs> That's okay, Merv. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but Helen's a, f- a fan of the Poocast podcast. Well, isn't that great, Kay? It's fantastic. I hope there's many more of you to follow. <laughs> Exactly. Now, look, the reason why we want to talk to you is because you mentioned to us one time when we got together for dinner or whatever, and we were talking about the poo cast, you said, oh, there's some foods I can't eat, some foods I don't like, and I'm thinking, oh, come on. What foods don't you like? I love all foods, Brian, but unfortunately, all foods don't love me. Like? Like wheat. Wheat is a big one. Where wheat tends to make me feel very uh, heavy and full and... I tend to have trouble going to the lovely place that a lot of people like to go and read for five minutes. You mean the dunny? That's the one. <laughs> oh, dear. So have you always had this problem with wheat or is this something that's come on as, as we've gotten to our middle years? <laughs> I think it's something that's evolved, Kay, yes. Over the years, we all used to love having bought bread, home-cooked bread, and over the years, my my digestion and my system, health issues, and I suppose as well we look at maybe not exercise, exercising different metabolisms change. Mm. So wheat is a big thing that I've excluded predominantly out of the but diet. There's a lot of things in our diets, aren't there, with wheat and all the rest of it. I mean, it's like our, 
What are you missing out on? What am I missing out on? Mm. I'm missing out on the lovely smell of, of bread, but um, changing over to different grains, different uh, sourdough um, and gluten-free bread has sort of replaced wheat in mm. my diet. We have a friend who's a celiac and, and mm. like very serious and uh, she just went to Europe and uh, apparently uh, lived on tuna salad basically most of the places because she can't get gluten-free there. But I'm curious as to your thoughts on why wheat is now such a problem. We know that some t- in some areas the farming practices have changed a lot. Do you think that's got anything to do with it, the changes to how wheat is grown, the soil it's grown in? Yeah, maybe grown and processed. And also I think, you know, there's chemical issues that are out there. Also, we look at different people's lifestyles and, and how we are, you know, now how we, we live, how we exercise. Mm. Um, I think there's so many changes personally in people's diets that maybe it's not always the wheat, it's the combination of other foods that we eat with the wheat yep. that can contribute to um, us having, yeah, suffering with whether it's bloating or, you know, digestion issues and also so, as we say, going bowel issues from it. There's a big push at the moment to um, just remove glyphosate completely from the process of, of farming and all the rest of it, which uh, could contribute to you know some of the issues that you're experiencing with wheat. Could do. Mm. Interesting. You said that there's a big push. I mean, you know, we are talking about elimination, and let's face it, we all <laughs> want to have a nice, healthy elimination. So, if you can't have wheat, what can you eat? A nice regular elimination would be would be <laughs> ideal. I predominantly now uh, like to test different foods, different types of flours in my diet. Predominantly gluten free. Love to cook with tapioca flour and cassava flours and millet. Is, is a good one. And teff, mm-hmm. uh, which was a one recently that we've introduced into our diet. What, what's teff? Teff is a very, very small grain, was predominantly available and eaten and grown in Ethiopia. I, oh, okay. I do believe it's now available, I think, somewhere in mm-hmm. Europe and Africa now grow it. And we do also grow teff in Australia now. Mm-hmm. So, but it's um, very gentle on your digestion. Right. It is gluten free. Okay. So, um, that's one that we're playing with at the moment. So, the condition in inverted commas that you have is it self diagnosed or uh, a doctor or a dietitian diagnosed it, or you just did it by a process of elimination? Uh, a combination. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Wrong word. <laughs> Com- combination of elimination. <laughs> he can't resist going No, away. no. No. Yeah, a combination of elimination. Um, I had seen a, a dietitian in previous mm. years and going through a few phases with the dietitian. Also then just trial and error with, with myself, you know, sort of stopping having wheat and just introducing good, fresh, healthy foods has helped a lot. What about things that a lot of people take for, co- uh, for granted they can eat, like uh, certain herbs? Yes. How do you go with herbs? Herbs love most herbs as i say parsley and mint and other things again aiding digestion Mm. um and general health and also big on on herbs for inflammation or anti-inflammation again in my diet probably the one thing that i will say is really yuck is um coriander can't touch it what can't touch coriander poor old coriander and it's used a lot these days i mean love thai food but i can't have fresh fresh coriander what does it taste like to you to me it's it's got a very metallic soapy taste which i know a lot of people say but it's it's an instant in the mouth i'm sorry i'm going to go and eliminate it (laughs) (laughs) it's terrible what about coriander seed Interesting coriander seed I am good with because it's normally in curries. I love Indian food and ground coriander being the seed, not the leaf, has a different flavour and a different reaction in, in, in my body. So, yes, mm. that's a tick. Well, it's it's very interesting to hear the different things people can and can't eat. Our co-host, Jossie, you've probably heard recently said she can't eat, oyst- eat mm. oysters because it tastes like snot. Mm. So you don't even nice want to think picture. about that, do you? No, no, no good picture. <laughs> Any other little tips or pieces of advice you might have for our listeners and viewers? I just think go with your gut. <laughs> Always go with your gut um, and, you know, enjoy enjoy food, enjoy tasting different food and, and listen to yourself. Often you'll crave something, love chocolate like everybody does, but, again, I'll have it and then a couple of days yeah. later it doesn't agree with me. So mm. go, go with your gut, listen yeah. to yourself. 
I think, as we said before, a process of elimination is the way it to go. It sure is. <laughs> Oh dear, I bring them everywhere. Thank you very much, Helen. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, oh, you can call me anything you want. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Just don't call them late for dinner. There we go. Oh, she's a lovely lady, the lovely Helen. But what did you make of, of that, Josie? Because you unfortunately couldn't be there when we were chatting with him. I noticed she said sourdough was an alternative to wheat products. So, Kay, can you tell me anything about sourdough and why that would be better than wheat? Well... Funny you should ask. I was thinking about that because I'm planning to try doing sourdough myself because it also suits a lot of people who have problems with FODMAPs, the mm. fructo oligosaccharides, etc., etc. I gather that it's because of the way that the gluten in flour is activated by the sour, the natural wild yeasts and things that are in the air around us. Mm. That's how sourdough started. And the longer that it's fermented, the more it gets rid of the nasty things in okay. basic wheat. Because the reason she's able to eat the sourdough without the problems is that they have a sourdough starter. They use double O, which is the baker's flour, which my dad used to use, obviously, a lot. He was a pastry cook, baker. And that's a different kind of flour with a different range of glutens. Bakers use different strength flours for different purposes. And in the case of sourdough, if it's just straight wheat, it becomes very much more manageable. If you have sourdough with rye, which tastes great, by the way, and some of the other sourdoughs, it perhaps might be a bit more difficult for people. But, yeah, it's mm. the wild yeast that naturally ferment the the gluten and flour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love sourdough, but I don't really know the, the ins and outs of why it's good for you. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, that's what I've been told, but um, I'm willing to be corrected if someone's listening who has a much better explanation. Exactly. And and look, as as we often, as we always say, we are not experts. What we're doing is doing some research on your behalf. However, Kay has done a uh, course with the uh, University of New Zealand. Of Canterbury. Of Canterbury with regards to nutrition. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make her an expert, but she did uh, pass with flying colours, I believe. Yes. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> a bit of an idea it's, anyway. It's a constant thing for me. I love research searching, finding out more about what's around us and I guess how we can all live happier and healthier. Fantastic. Mm. Well, it's been fantastic sitting on your balcony today, including the cars going by and the birds and all sorts of things. I'm so just waiting for the kangaroos because <laughs> come dusk, they come bounding along exactly. this beautiful park yes, in Josie's place. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we really enjoy your company. And uh, have, uh, if you've got any comments, by all means, comment on our Facebook page, which is Pukas Podcast on Facebook, and uh, maybe share some of our stories with friends. Ooh, um, please do. Meantime, I'm going to say see you later. I'm Brian Pickering. I'm Kay Brown. And I'm Justin Watts. Bye. See you next time, and we'll have tasty dinners in a packet. Yes, there are some. Thanks for joining us today on the Pucast Podcast. If you like what we do, please share. And remember, our stories are for general information only. Make sure you always seek advice from your registered health professional. And thanks again for listening.